So, hello. Um, hi. 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 So here we are with with uh, most music talks again. Our nice little experiment. I mean, nice. It's it's a well, yeah, but it's a nice little experiment of of uh, keeping in touch with each other and with you guys out there uh, about most, um, which is our. Uh, Creative Europe co-funded project uh, targeted at the Balkans world music industry. And uh, today uh, we connect Novi Sad, Skopje and Budapest here. So Goriana and Teika, uh, hi from Skopje. Uh, yeah. Very enviable open air location. Very nice lights compared to Ours, these sad gray gentlemen here, Ivan and me, closed in our offices. Um, and so, hi, Ivan from from Exit Festival, Novi Sad. Hi. Yeah. So today we we gathered um, to discuss uh, festivals and live events. Uh, this summer, I mean, let's hope it's just the summer that is affected. Uh, and Gorian and Teika are from Password Production, um, uh, big player from Macedonia in the region. Several festivals, tours, conference, and Ivan is representing Exit Festival, uh, but also Novi Sad, where uh, that is uh, next year's European Capital of Culture, uh, which is also something that. Uh, that we will touch upon. So hello, let can you describe us what's what's the life there where you are? How is how are the streets looking in Skopje? It's empty, uh, or is there some life in the streets already? Well, um, since last week they started to uh, relax a little bit the measures. Uh, we still have police hour. Because I don't know if you know, we had the most strict measures. I mean, Macedonia and Serbia were similar. So we had like really, really big um, police hours. We had also 24 hours in the weekend, no going out. And now they keep it until 7 p.m. So after 7 p.m. is police hour and people started to go back to work. For example, we started to come to the office since uh, Monday. Uh, the streets are not uh, in full capacity yet. I mean, as what I can see, uh, it's still people are not all the people are uh, are back to work. So many of many of the people are still working from home. We are waiting. Uh, middle of may so 16 of may to see what uh, the government will say about in the future how the measures will be and i guess from beginning of june things will start to come back to normal also the coffee shops are still not open i guess next week i actually they said yesterday that next week they will open the the bars with uh, half working capacity and also they will open the sports uh, studios uh, also with some measures so people will not be so close together. And I hope beginning of June things will start to come back a little bit like they were before. But they said that they will keep some measures throughout the whole summer. So we'll see. So this this police hour that you mentioned it's an actual curfew yes yeah it's a curfew so we had before 24 hours from friday until monday no going out at all so we stayed at home for example for oh. the easter and for the first of may and also we had police hour from four o'clock p.m until 5 a.m the next day it was really, really funny because you couldn't buy in, at the store. There were like huge rows of people. You need to wear masks. Mm -hmm. And 
now you can go to the store with masks so now you you need to go everywhere with, which is closed um, space you need to wear a mask so that's they will keep that measure i guess throughout the summer but at least now no. we can go to the shop normally and buy ingredients so no chance for a nice meza with friends yeah. uh, you can call friends at your home but nobody should know you should keep it quiet <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> and how is novi sad looking ivan hi everybody uh, actually it is similar we had similar measures like uh, our friends in skopje because uh, we were under uh, strong measurements and curfews uh, for like month and a half from uh, starting of March 15 until the end of April and then the government said that we uh, basically passed the worst period and from uh, this or last week uh, the state of emergency is cancelled and now basically everything is getting back to normal this week so the cafes are open, the restaurants, the gyms, uh, I think the even school uh, kindergartens are starting uh, to be open uh, even even public transport. So from this week, I think we are quite back into the normal, uh, in considering me, uh, in terms of measurements. Uh, only thing which is still uh, not allowed is crossing border and, uh, of course, uh, big events. So now the maximum number of people uh, on public events could be 50 people. So that's that's still on, and that's how we are now getting to the next questions, what will be with our industry this summer, I guess. Yeah. So what are your plans? I mean, your festivals are way bigger than 50 people. Yes, but actually, this is probably the worst uh, year in our, our industry, not just the event industry, music industry, and, uh, of course, whole culture sector and tourism sector. So we are, as you probably know, the strongest hit by, by this pandemic from all economy. Uh, there are some uh, estimation of the uh, World Tourism Organization that the tourism uh, number of visitors of uh, tourists will drop for 70% globally this year. Culture is close to these uh, figures. So uh, in terms of uh, major events, we are now probably the few last remaining forbidden uh, industries and uh, for, for us for us this is sorry no no go on go on Ivan. okay uh, so uh, so for this summer like uh, nobody knows now what will what will happen at the end uh, we postponed our festival sea star in umag in croatia for the next year uh, the, the date is supposed to be May 20, uh, 22nd, so we managed to postpone it for the next year and to keep the complete lineup, which was... Uh, wow. So that was, that was one of the, the biggest tasks because we had uh, Cypress Hill and some other major headliners, so we managed to copy-paste the program, which was not easy to do. Uh, so so the, the next are uh, exit in, in, in Serbia and uh, sea dance in, in Montenegro uh, in the end of the August. But now we are facing the various challenges. First, there is no strict uh, policy uh, yet about will the events be allowed and on the summer and if they will be allowed, how many people can gather and under which measurements. Uh, as we now seeing in Serbia, the people, the, the, the streets are full of people. I think like everybody forgot it like in, in seven days. We were under a very strong pressure and now everybody are like on the loose. Uh, so uh, I, I, I'm seeing like every day the cafes are full, the, the restaurants are full, public transport is allowed. So there is no, you know, it's a small closed space. So we see that uh, that that it's but for the event there are different opinions of course of the, in the on the doctors some say it shouldn't be allowed some say it now is the best time for everything to be allowed because the virus is not so strong there are some 
they said uh, the virus is uh, the, the weakest during the, the summer and uh, that is the best time that we open so the people can get immunity. So, but nobody knows for sure what, what, what is the situation, as you probably know. But in terms of our industry, uh, uh, it's, it's a big problem for us because uh, we are not alone. We have many suppliers, many people depending on us, uh, workers, uh, performers, uh, uh, technicians. Uh, uh, we have a huge system. Uh, and for the live, live music industry, the musician is the, this is the hardest period because they cannot do their job, they cannot perform. Um, many of them, this is the only, many of them, this is the only source of income. For okay, big stars will survive for sure. They have, they have stock, uh, they have uh, uh, that opportunity. But for the for those who are not in the top category, this is like very hard period. So. What we are asking today, uh, for our government is that we sit and that we discuss what will be situation in July, August. Will events be allowed? For how many people? And uh, if they are be allowed, what kind of measurements we can we can count on? We are seeing now situation for the traveling uh, because the borders will be open for the neighboring country. I think in June first. That uh, also with Hungary. So. In order that you go uh, outside the border, uh, you need to do a corona test, not older yeah. than 72 hours. So if, if that traveling system works, maybe we could do the same for the event. Or we can use that, um, uh, of course, mask and things like that. So You mean uh, testing, the, testing the people before they enter the festival area? Mm -hmm. We are thinking. We are thinking about all possibilities, and of course, postponing the event is also an option uh, at this moment. But uh, we don't want to do anything bef before uh, we have an official statement uh, of the uh, of the government. What, what is the position uh, in this moment? Mm, of course, for all event or organizers, if there is no event, it's 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 financial catastrophe. And not just for the organizer, but all whole people who are in the in the in the in the value chain. So, Ivan, uh, uh, okay. Uh, I, I think there is some uh, confusion about what will be postponed and what not. Araceli from Spain is asking that if exit will be postponed, but uh, it's uh, it's the Umag festival that you mentioned that you already postponed, right? Yes, in Croatia, uh, that's our Sea Star Festival in Umag in Croatia is postponed because it's supposed to happen in the May. So and for exit, you are still waiting for more information. Yes, we are still waiting. Uh, for us, we can we can do the final preparation in one month. So there is still little time for everything, but of course postponing on later months is also an option or at the end postponing for next year but at this point we don't have any certain information how situation will go on with opening uh, but, uh, by this but by this time of the year you usually sell all your tickets for exit right uh, not we, we start selling even uh, in December yeah so we we sell like Maybe 50%, we already said like 50% before the Corona or, or more. So, mm -hmm. so uh, the tourism capacity was 97% booked in Novi Sad during the, uh, during the exit time in February. So all hotels were already full uh, with the reservations. But of course, in this period, no, now it's completely uncertainty on anything. Uh, but as I told you, we are waiting for the final uh, 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 how you say, outcome of whole uh, pandemic situation and what will be the official statement of the government. And we are preparing for all options. Well, you, are, you seem to be in a better position than, for example, in festivals in Hungary. Here everything is cancelled until August the 15th. The 15th of August uh, until then, every big event is cancelled. So yeah, but th that's that's also uh, you have certain situation. We, we still don't have that. Uh, yeah. But you know, we people in uh, Serbian Balkans, because of this many crises happening 
during our <laughs> history, we are ready for any kind of situation and to be creative. To we are masters to to uh, masters in survivaling things. So uh, and right. last minute last minute stuff. So we are functioning in a different, how do you say, frequency. So a bit yeah, crisis with is this. a crisis is a lifestyle in the Balkans. <laughs> I would say it, uh, it it made us more creative. That's that should be. So, um, what will happen with your festivals, uh, Tech and Goriana? Uh, well, we we are having our summer festival, the festival, um, before exit. So it's third of July, and it's a really really nice one because it's like a national youth festival, and it's by by a lake in a small town in Macedonia, Doiran, by the border of Greece, and yeah. people just loved it. I mean, everybody, all the young, and also we had family days, so also families love it. So we are not giving up on having the festival. As the exit said, like, we are also waiting the measures because I think only Serbia and Macedonia don't have official measures from the government. What are we expecting for the summer? And we are going to find out that until the end of May. And whatever the measures are, we are going to do properly by them. So if they allow event for how many people they are they're allowing, we are going to do it in Doiran because Doiran is also a touristic city which in the past had lost the capacity of tourism. And with our festival, with the festival, we really um, we really um, all, we really revived the vibe of the city. So now it's really famous for the for the festival. So we are also um, having, we are also uh, thinking that we are obliged to do something, especially now when we are aware that the tourism is really low and it won't be uh, like in, in, in the past this year. So we are obliged to do at least something there. So we are very like um, very dedicated to, to, to happen, uh, to do something there and some event to happen. So we are waiting for the measures and since we know them, we will come officially with what we are going to do. Uh, the lineup uh, we are also keeping and we will see how it will go with opening of the borders. Uh, also, there is another option that we are keeping the lineup for the next year. If this uh, year we are not able to have all the artists international that are coming from let's say the states and etc that they cannot come we are mm -hmm. keeping them for the next year and we will do the event this year with the artists that we already have that they can actually come and be free you know to to come to uh, in the border so yeah we are optimistic about it and we as i said started to again come and gather in the office and started to think of all of these plans so we have a b c d e f plan and Whatever, whatever they say, uh, we are going to, to, to do it. Yeah, and when it comes to mm -hmm. the film music conference, uh, we are still like making the program and the booking as it's usual because it's um, at the end of uh, November. But um, as Goriana said, we are adapting for the measurements and um like a digital option it's always a like the secure option but yeah but that's a boring yeah but digital we try to boring. make something like if they allow us to make a event for three people then we will definitely do it because even yeah. though it's a very hard situation we should not like lose hope and be all depressed and stuff like this is actually a very good situation to be more creative and to think of other things that we haven't done before so yeah so for example the festival we are going to do it in doiran also we are not going to do something else like or make um reconciliation with the whatever the measurements are if they allow us like even to gather ourselves we will just go there and do the the event yeah i, I can't deny it would be much better to sit with you in that backyard and the four of us talking yes, there. Yes, and to have all this the energy and also yeah. to meet you. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, videos can't beat, can't beat the real thing. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Uh, but um, 
the legal legal measurements is one thing. So if you can do the festival legally, but will the people be trusting the situation? Will the will the people be you know brave enough, relaxed enough to go to festivals, even if it's legally allowed? Well, knowing uh, the Macedonian mentality, people here enjoy to go out and have fun and to attend events. So I'm sure that part of the people won't be very flexible just to move around and uh, be in a large group of people. But I don't think, I mean, it's going to be like a balanced situation, I guess. I mean, we don't know yet, but... Um, so far, uh, as we can see, there is a lot of people like in the park and uh, hiking, like they want to go out and to be with someone. So I'm sure there will be this small percent of people that they will not be very flexible, but I'm sure there will be this other group of people that they would love to come and have fun. So, yeah, it's half, half, I guess. And it, and it, and also it's summer. You cannot keep people people behind closed doors. So sure. people will, will find a way, even if you know there is no allowance at all for nothing, they will still find a way to to find what makes them happy and that's like gathering together, having summer fun. Even in the backyards with um with water and uh, how do you say <laughs> hose with, with hose. a hose. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe as yeah. as as war teaches you to value peace, as a summer without festivals teaches us to value the festivals better. Yes. Yeah, and actually, it's a good thing because maybe this is will be like a point where we can just stay calm and think, and think of the past, how everything went, and to revalue the whole music industry, business and the whole events industry. So I think next year's better things will come because we will be more wise. We, will, we now have time to think and to actually take what's best and take, what's, take the quality, not the quantity. That's my personal opinion. Yeah. Maybe I would like this to... is the point. Yeah, I would like go, to jump ahead, in yeah. just just on this because before this pandemic uh, pandemic, I think we were also uh, looking for some forecasts about virtual reality and how in the future everything will be VR and uh, digital and, and and this crisis show that we can function online function and uh, probably in the future this this is how the the, the future will look like. Uh, in, in, in our lives, like business will be happening here or, or uh, there will be uh, the, the, the majority of things will be done online. And in that forecast, they said the only industry which will, cannot be replaced with the online is an event industry. Actually, events will be in the future the only place where people will actually meet and, and have a... Uh, uh, have a physical contact like in, in 10 years I don't know have you listening like I think the Elon Musk said that at, at this point they already developed some technology do you have some eye contacts you can put it uh, like regular contacts you put it and it is it, it connected with the brain with the brain waves so you put the contact on and you can you can project your Facebook and everything uh, just by your thoughts so and they said they already had a technology and that will be used in mass, uh, mass production uh, usage will be in 10 years. So in 10 years, uh, instead of this conversation, we will just send the waves in our context and I will see Balash like he's here. So all our work, sending emails, uh, contacts, yeah, and... telephones, it will be done yeah. basically in, inside of our head. Uh, and now, it's like black mirror uh, scenario. Yes, yes. Yeah. I, I know that now. Now it's look. Uh, now it's look uh, terrifying and impossible. But just, uh, just imagine like twenty years or thirty years ago, who will say that everybody will have small thing, and on the street everybody will twenty four hours looking and in it. So this is the same. Just, just it will be more upgraded. So in that terms, our event industry will be have the more value than ever. I think. Because it will 
remain us with the basic human touch and communications, contact and everything. So we just have to survive this, this, this yeah. crisis and things will, will work out, I think, at the end. And, and we won't be speaking in English with each other because everybody will speak every language. You will have Google Translate directly into your okay. brain and... No, yeah. no, no Google Translate, please, because then we won't understand each other. <laughs> it would be funnier, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that will happen. No, no but uh, not everything that is possible has to be done. I mean, even yeah. if it's possible, I'm, I hope it won't happen. Just, just wait for the 2030. We'll be in touch, Balash. So, <laughs> yeah, we'll check it out in 10 years. I mean, the, the, the language part, I would be happy about, actually. It's, uh, of, of course. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's let's just mention most because we are here for the most project. Um, that uh, now the applications call for applications for most are open and now I mean Exit Foundation uh, and Ivan is a part of the the most consortium. Uh, D Festival is a part now already of the Festival Exchange Program, which is where the call for applications are closed already. But we've got three other applications open for one for artists, one for professionals, managers, promoters, journalists, uh, and one for policymakers, cities, uh, and local cultural workers. Um, and the deadline is approaching fast, so so please apply. Of course, most is also affected by the, by the situation. So we had to postpone a few things, few events, but uh, right now we are kind of confident that from September we can, we can continue with physical uh, trainings um, and also do the ones that have been postponed. Uh, so just- Can I add something? Yes, of course you can. I really want to praise the program because I really find it great. I don't see often that um, there there is something like that offering for the people coming from the Balkans. So usually it's from the Western countries or et, et cetera. So I think it's a really good opportunity for people here to actually find out what is happening and to apply and finally to have some chance and opportunity for them. So... Thumbs up, it's a, I mean, it's a great project yeah. that you made, so. Good job. Yeah, so everybody should apply. I mean, nevertheless, their experience or their non-experience, they should try. I'm yeah. so happy we, re we recorded this because then we can play it looped on the website. <laughs> yeah, go up, apply, up, up, go up, apply. Up the go deadline. Apply. <laughs> yeah, please. Yeah, we'll use it in really the next nice. four years all the time. <laughs> Your yeah. endorsement. <laughs> um, and um, how is uh, the financial effect on your companies? How how bad is that? Can how can you survive financially? Who will start? <laughs> Ladies uh, first. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <Okay. laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's a fact that um, every company is losing money because of the uh, like cancellation of events or postponing events. Um, so far, how we're surviving, it's applying to projects. And uh, we also applied for subvention from the government so we can cover our salaries and uh, other costs. So, so far, these are the only options that we're doing so far yeah and we are hoping that that will cover us until everything started to come back to normal and we are having events so yeah the government was nice because they offered this um, minimal wages for all the people that are working in the sectors that are really in crisis now and mm -hmm. also we had some projects also from the government and from the eu so we are trying to and also to keep all other expenses at low so we are positive at least a couple of months that we will be okay cool. but Even, we are constantly searching 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 for yeah 
yeah, we need to be creative to survive, as as you said. And also that, yeah. 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 The, our our government in Serbia introduced some measurements, uh, like this minimal wage uh, helped for three months, uh, but nobody knows what will happen afterwards and uh, what is the, the, the situation that these measurements are the same for all whole economy, uh, and which is we consider okay, but we need more sectorial measurements for the culture sector and tourism because they are the strongest hit by this uh, special event. We are basically one of the few forbidden industries. So we have uh, from yeah. March zero income, nobody's buying tickets, uh, sponsors are canceling and everything. So in order to that we survive, we definitely need uh, uh, specific measurements for the tourism and culture. Uh, and I think every in every government interest is to, to preserve this sector, which is uh, employing so many people and uh, having huge contribution to the society at all. So. But uh, we are still waiting for the specific measurements because without them, it will be very difficult because we will have like, I don't know how many months of no income, especially if this, the, the, the final decision is to postpone it. Uh, but we see that if we have real talks with them, that we can, we can find out the way that the health is on the first, of course, place and, and to keep the industry going. Uh, but that that struggle is still a front of us. Uh, we know that globally, like uh, in, in terms of tourism, is uh, is uh, about ten percent of G global GDP and ten percent of all jobs are in danger. Uh, plus culture, so we are talking about huge number of people, companies, uh, NGOs, uh, uh, artists, uh, and so on, who are uh, rental companies, which are now. Uh, basically uh, on the on the line so so we, we, we see that on EU level there are some positive tendencies going on uh, and understanding but we need still have to uh, do that with our local governments in the Balkans yeah and uh, what are your personal strategies to to survive this period are you listening to music are you playing music I know Taika is playing the drums that's that's good because it's also you know playing music and also an exercise so you can yeah yeah you can do two in one uh, but yeah well uh, what's your survival technique? well me and uh, me and uh, Goriana we're doing yoga she got me into yoga yeah so she's my motivator to to exercise um, I also have an electronic uh, set at home so I can practice. Uh, when it comes to music, um, I realize that jazz music kind of makes me the most happy in this quarantine situation. So, cool. Yeah, also drawing and I don't know, getting better at cooking, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So I have been cooking all the time. I have did all the meals I wanted to do and now I said I can die peacefully. <laughs> I finally fulfilled my mother's dream, so that's it. <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah, and I do yoga and I just go out for walks in the nature. That really helps me. Yeah. And just, you know, be inside of yourself, relax and think for the future and what will, how to be prepared. That's it. Yeah, this quarantine maybe was very unexpected situation for everyone and not a lot of people were ready to face with it. For me, like the first 10 days were great because, okay, we're going to have some rest from all of these events. But then it started to get worse and you get this de like depressed days when you're feeling down and you don't want to do anything. And you're like, okay, what's going to happen with the future? You know how I'm going to survive. But um, it's also a good period to be focused on yourself, like to upgrade some stuff that you wanted to upgrade and just like take time for yourself and take care of yourself. So like the, the mental position, it was very important in this quarantine. So yeah, I totally agree. So the only thing that really worked is like focusing on yourself and uh, trying to be better in all all, all sense so I think mo 
the people really caught, finally people ha had the time to stop a little bit and to think about where are they and what are they actually doing and if they're doing are they loving what they're doing or not and etc so i think this is in the bed i mean that the crisis are is crisis you actually can find something really good for yourself so it's not so bad i mean it's not bad at all actually it's it's okay yeah and at the end of the day we have to realize that this situation is not gonna last forever yeah it has to stop at some point so we have to keep positive mindset yeah yeah, and, yeah. yeah. It seems like music, nature, and 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 exercise are the ones that are helping people the most. I mean, that's my experience. Yeah. So, and it's uh, it's actually good. I mean, it's a good lesson. Yeah. In this sense. Ivan, what's your strategy? Uh, actually, our our strategy is already passed because we are free now from this week. We are like in quarantine for a yeah. month and a half. So now everything is back to normal. But during the quarantine. I will say the same like uh, our friends from Skopje said that it's, it, is, it was good to have time to reflect on yourself because it, when you are everyday routine and running around uh, coping with many obligations, you don't have time to reflect and think about uh, what are you doing in your life, what is important to you and etc. So during this time, I think uh, I, I was using that for to reflect, to think about a lot of this stuff at, at some point. It was even even good for us who have the strong rhythm to have that time, to have that time. And of course, I was reading a lot. Uh, that was one of my passions, of course. Uh, uh, meditating and one one thing which is very uh, important is uh, connect uh, to connect with nature. I was I was several times going out on the villages during the weekends, especially uh, where I had some friends and even one month in one, one weekend that, that, that helped me survive with the kids in, in house because it is the most difficult stuff to keep them closed in four, door, four walls. Uh, but I, I figured out that the, uh, the most of the problem of the modern man is, is coming from that, that we are disconnected from the nature because we are natural beings. We are not, uh, industrial beings. So being in nature and, uh, in the woods, especially in the mountains, walk uh, that that's something which is priceless, and that's giving me like strength to to think about in the future. Never, nevertheless, what happened in, with, with this uh, whole situation that I definitely should be more in nature, spending time time there, and even maybe live there on, on some occasions. That could be also useful because I see the kids are very the, the most happiest when they are in the woods on the, on the walks. That's I never saw them so happy. Uh, uh, so so th th that that is one of my one of my learnings. And uh, so at the end, it was not hard for us. Of course, maybe that because we in Serbia had this uh, training in nineties much harder with uh, so many wars, mm -hmm. bombings uh, of NATO and uh, sanctions. We were under sanctions for three years. So. After that, everything this seems like a, a, a vacation, you know. So <laughs> at, at the end, it was not so hard. Talking about nature, you've got that very nice tree planting project, right? Yes, uh, yes. That, in, in the in the mountains around the city. Yes, I, I just figured out that that, that uh, foresting and tree planting uh, initiative that we started uh, should be one of the key focuses for the Edges, Edges Foundation. And we are already preparing uh, new uh, actions for tree planting in, in the autumn because that's a period where you can plant autumn and early spring, uh, which is gone now. But uh, uh, and we will encourage all our neighbors in the region to join us. So that will be also uh, because the tree planting is the best solution for the climate change and for uh, keeping uh, carbon out from the air. So uh, we will do a lot of efforts to explain to people why tree planting is so important and to encourage them to join us with their own actions on the field. Cool. Um, I think we are about uh, to wrap it up. Uh, and uh, we haven't discussed the Capital of Culture project of Novi Sad, but that's okay because tomorrow there will be another talk and there uh, we can discuss it with Vuk Radulovic. Uh, 
who is representing the Novisad Capital of Culture project. And uh, there will be Simona Naiman from the Timisoara Capital of Culture here as well. And uh, it will be hosted by Dayan Vujinovic, uh, the Ethnofest uh, program director. So tomorrow at the same time at 11, there will be another talk. Uh, and don't forget to apply for, for the most um, call apply for now. applications. Go apply, go yeah. apply, go yeah, apply. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Just two more days, apply now. Yeah. Yeah, is there anything else you, you wanted to share? Take a Goriana, Ivan. Start playing Counter-Strike. <laughs> If you're still in a quarantine. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it was such a nice talk and you spoil it just at the last minute. <laughs> <laughs> My final yeah. message is listen to the good music and plant a tree. Yeah. yeah. Start doing okay. yoga. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, bye -bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ciao. 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 <laughs>